Hey guys, so here I'm back with one more question. So this question could be asked in any type of the exam like Pro, physics, MLE, as well as IF1. Uh, so let's discuss the question. First, let me read the question. A 42 year old gentleman present to the primary care physician with the complaints of persistent headaches and general weakness. He was recently diagnosed with the severe hypertension that has been refractory to the antihypertensive medication. Based on clinical suspicion, a basic metabolic panel is obtained in which demonstrates a sodium level of 150 mg per deciliter and potassium level of 2.9 mg per deciliter. The hormone that most likely causes of this patient presentation is normally secreted by which region of the adrenal gland. So, what they are trying to ask us is, so I have a patient of hypertension and I suspected some disease in this person and they are asking which of the following part of the adrenal gland is responsible for that. So, so let's see the patient what they have given and how to deal with the question. So let's start how to deal with the question here. It's very simple. They have told that the patient is having hypertension and they have been giving the antihypertensive drug. So the patient was given the antihypertensive drug, but that didn't show the effectiveness. After that, the doctor suspected some problems and he took a metabolic panel. In that metabolic panel, the sodium level was 153. What is the sodium level? Sodium level is 153. That is milli equivalent per liter or mg per deciliter. It's almost the same thing. So what they have given is sodium level 153 and our potassium level is what? Potassium level is given 2.9. So let's see what happened here. Let me compare. I have a table for you people to make it easier. So sodium level normally is 136 to 145. Chloride level is 95 to 105. Potassium level is 3.5 to 5.0. Bicarbonate is 28 to 28. So let me compare here. Normal potassium level is 3.5 to 5.0. What happened here? The patient is having the potassium level of 2.9. So if the patient is having the potassium level of 2.9, that indicates me hypokalemia. Hypokalemia. So what it says, patient's blood potassium levels has been decreased. What else next? Sodium level. Sodium level is what? 153. Normally it's up to 145. So what is the uh, condition here? The patient is having hypernatremia. The sodium level has been increased. Yes or no? So the patient is having what? Hypernatremia. Patient is having hypernatremia with hypokalemia. So which of the following substances will cause the hypernatremia and hypokalemia? That will be our aldosterone. What aldosterone does is? It's very simple. It increases the potassium excretion. It increases the potassium excretion. In the urine, it increases the potassium excretion in the urine and increases the sodium reabsorption. Increases the sodium reabsorption. So, what happened here? So, what happened here? The patient is having <coughs> hypernatremia and hypokalemia, and that could be done by aldosterone. Why that could be done by aldosterone? Because aldosterone causes potassium excretion. How does it cause the potassium excretion? See, aldosterone acts in the collecting duct of the nephron. It acts in the collecting duct of the nephron. When it is acting on the collecting duct of the nephron, it will make special sodium potassium form. So it's very simple. Let me make a cell. Okay. So this is one cell of the it's one cell of the collecting duct. And let me take this will be the basolateral side, basolateral side of the collecting duct, and this will be the lumen. So what do I mean by this will be the lumen and basolateral side? It's very simple. If this is the collecting duct, if this is a collecting duct, from here I took one cell and the cell with this side will be lumen because this will be the lumen and here will be the end product leaving us. Okay, so this will be the lumen and this will be the basolateral side. So what happens whenever I have more aldosterone, aldosterone receptors are located in the principal cells of the inner. These are called as cells of the collecting. 
what happens whenever I have more Aldous given, Aldous given will act on the Aldous given receptor that will give a signal to the nucleus and nucleus will make some new protein that will come and sit here that will cause the increased sodium reabsorption. That will cause the increased sodium reabsorption. From here it will be taken up to the clear. So sodium is being reabsorbed. At the same time it will also kick out the potassium ion. It can kick out the potassium ions or it can kick out the hydrogen ions. Potassium ions, hydrogen ions will be kicked out. So where it is entering? Entering into the lumen. So if I go here from uh, this diagram, if I imply it here, what happens? So potassium will be lost into the urine. Sodium will be gone into the plate. So aldosterone causes increased potassium excretion and increased sodium reabsorption. Now you might have a question, what is the relationship between the increased sodium reabsorption and patient's hypertension? It's very simple, patient is having what? Hypertension, hypertension is due to sodium reabsorption. Where there is a sodium reabsorption, it will also increase the water reabsorption. So golden rule of the kidney is that wherever sodium goes, water follows. So sodium is going through the blood and water will also go to the blood when I have more blood quantity that will lead to increased volume of the blood. When I have more volume of the blood, that will lead to what? Elevated blood pressure. So, in this case, I have hypermetremia, hypokalemia, and the patient is having what? Hypertension, which was not <coughs> helpful by the, which was not helpful by which one? Which was not helpful by our antihypertensive drug. So, let's go further. Now, the question is, which part of the adrenal gland secretes the aldosterone? So we found the culprit. The culprit was high level of aldosterone. Yes or no? So which part of the adrenal gland secretes the aldosterone? If we find that we have our answer. Okay. So here we come. For example, let's see, let's take this of adrenal gland. Let's take this of adrenal gland. Adrenal gland is divided into two regions, the outer cortex, outer cortex, and the inner and the inner medulla. So this we need to remember, see, medulla, medulla produces some substances called as catecholamines. Medulla produces some substances called as catecholamines. Which are those catecholamines that are epinephrine, are also called as adrenaline, norepinephrine, or noradrenaline, and dopamine. And dopamine. Now, cortex. So, here is the answer for our question. Adrenal cortex produces <coughs> many substances that includes. So, first, let's understand the layers of the adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex has three layers. That is Standardly remembered by everyone in a pneumonia, that is GFR. GFR. So, G for zona glomerulosa. Adrenal cortex has three zones. In that one of the zones is called as zona glomerulosa. So, we have in the option zona glomerulosa. The next option is zona fasciculata. So, the fasciculata is here. The next zone is zona fasciculata. The next zone is called as zona reticularis, that is also in the option. Now we need to understand which of the following layer produces our aldosterone. So, zona glomerulosa produces mineral corticoids. Mineral corticoids. So, mineral corticoids is produced by our zona glomerulosa, which is our favorite mineral corticoid and most important that is our aldosterone. That is our aldosterone. So, the answer is what? Zona glomerulosa. Zona glomerulosa will be the answer. Why? Because patient has hyperkalemia, I'm sorry, hypokalemia with hypernatremia. That is excessive aldosterone. When I have excessive aldosterone, which part is fun functioning more? That is from the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal gland. Zona glomerulosa produces our mineralocorticoids. That is 